Should you work as a government employee? I sat down with a friend of mine in order to discuss the details of his government job. The agency that we're focused on today is the Department of Energy, which is headquartered in Washington, DC. They have about 15,000 employees working for them. He actually started in the government in 2015. From 2015 to 2018, he worked at the Department of Labor. Now, the way that he got into the government is through an internship program. He was at a university, he took advantage of one of the many government internship programs and became a full-time employee. He has worked at the Department of Energy for four years. His title is Program Manager, but he's actually a general engineer. So I asked him how he got his job. He didn't use the USA Jobs resume builder. He used his own format. It was only two pages. He was a recent graduate, so there wasn't a lot of experience that he could put in there. But in hindsight, he realizes there were keywords he should have put in his resume. Maybe he would have got hired a lot quicker. Now, if you're struggling with what type of resume to use, I have a federal resume template that is well-structured, well-formatted. If you're interested in downloading that template, check out the pinned comment down below. So he applied to over 200 jobs in a six month period, and he received five interview requests that resulted in three job offers. In his situation, he was in a different state, but he really wanted to be in the DC area. So he was applying a lot, almost every day in order to get to the DC area. Now the job offer he ended up accepting was a GS 7911. So he came in as a GS nine, but the full performance level was an 11. After the interview, the hiring manager actually sat with him and said, hey, listen, the plan is to put you in this position but once you're a GS 11 and you've done that for 12 months, we will open up a GS 12, 13 position for you. So usually you don't take people at their word. You want everything in writing, but this guy took a gamble. He said, okay. And as it turns out right now, he is a GS 12 in the DC area. So it worked out, it worked out very well for him. And for that job, there was only one interview. The problem was the interview was in DC. So he had to travel hours to get to DC in order to do the interview in person. He said it wasn't that challenging. It was not that technical. It was more about the soft skills. They wanted to see what type of individual he was, if he would be a good fit for the team. And he figures that for the technical skills, they just pretty much base it off what he had in the resume. So what can help somebody get hired in the Department of Energy? He said, don't give up. Do not take no personally. You can apply five times and be rejected all five times. That doesn't mean there isn't a place for you in that agency. You have to be persistent. You have to keep applying. It doesn't really cost anything to apply except for your time. And what else are you going to do with the time? Do you have a better place to spend that time? If all you're going to do is watch Netflix or play video games, then maybe you should be applying instead. All right, so then I asked him, what are some of the pros and cons of working in the Department of Energy? For pros, he likes the type of work he's doing. He actually feels like he is able to make an impact with that work. Also work-life balance, having the time off and working towards a guaranteed federal pension. For cons, it has to be the pay. Once you end up getting experience, the pay gap only widens when you're talking about engineering. When you're talking about being an engineer in the government versus the private sector, the pay gap widens quite a bit and he has received offers that are twice his salary in the private sector twice his salary, but then he remembers, why does he have a government job? He's doing it for the pension. He's doing it for the benefits to be able to spend time with his family. So he rejects those offers. He continues with the Department of Energy. So I asked him, what do you do on a typical day? Four days out of the week, he's able to work at home. Only once a week does he come into the office. Now on a typical day, he has about a hundred emails. He has to sort through, read, and then he has mandatory meetings that he has to attend. So that takes three to four hours a day. And he mentioned that when it comes to these meetings, a lot of times he feels that they're going on too long, that people are not being clear and concise. So he's left with 40% of his actual time doing engineering tasks. So he does proposal reviews, program planning, and other engineering work. So I asked him, why did you pick government work instead of being a contractor? And he said as an intern, he had already accumulated 200 hours of leave. He had his federal government TSP already set up. So from him being a student, the transition seemed more logical to him. And then I asked him, would you ever consider in the future maybe getting a contracting job? And he told me, no, no, he's not. 
So what would cause someone to get fired at the Department of Energy? If you're a permanent employee and you do something like lie on your time card, that can cause you to be terminated. But for performance issues, it takes a lot longer. So there's always an opportunity to improve or that's how it's looked upon. If you're having performance issues, they will give you a performance improvement plan and they will reassess and it'll take months, if not years sometimes. Also, there's a lot of positions in the DOE that require security clearances. If you were to lose that clearance, that's part of the job qualifications. You wouldn't be qualified to work anymore. I asked him if he's planning on changing jobs anytime in the near future. He likes it at the Department of Energy. He's not planning on changing anytime soon, but at the same time, he doesn't like to get too comfortable in a job. So if he reaches the point where everything is really comfortable, he knows 100% of what he's doing, he's gonna change, he's gonna move somewhere else because he believes in that mentality that you should always be trying to challenge yourself. He's not there yet, but he's thinking maybe in three or four years, he might get to that point. So then I asked him on a scale from one to 10, one being you hate the job, 10 being you love the job, what would you rate this job at the Department of Energy? and he told me he would give it a nine. He did say that it can get quite political there and he believes in the type of work that he does. That type of work shouldn't really be involved, shouldn't really be messed up with politics. It's his own personal take on the situation. In most of these federal agencies, you can have all of the top level SES executives. They can be replaced with every administration. So there's always gonna have that turnover. If it were not for the political motivations, he would give this job a 10 out of 10. Now, if you're open to federal government jobs, but maybe you're also open to contracting jobs, you wanna see things from the contractor perspective. If you wanna know that, then I want you to watch this video next. If you would like to see more videos like this, please click like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.